Hi, everybody. Welcome to Kati Virtual Academy. My name is DJ Munzik. I'm the VP of Marketing here at Kati. Uh, today, we've got Quentin on. He's going to help us through some awesome content he's prepared. He, I looked through his presentation. He's put a lot of effort into this. So I think you guys are in for a treat. Um, if you don't mind, Quentin, we'll go ahead and do a sh share those slides. I wanted to welcome everybody and let them know some new news we have going on with Kati. Hope everybody's having a good day. All right. So jumping in, if you don't mind, uh, jumping into presentation mode for us, Quentin. All right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do that. I just want to make sure that, because I have a wider screen, so that might be a problem for some people, but hopefully not. It looks pretty good. I, okay. I think we're good. So yeah, today we're covering AutoCAD Plan 3D, ACC collaboration with Quentin Contreras, our senior application engineer. And if you jump into the next slide, I'm going to quickly just share that Kati Virtual Academy is evolving. Uh, some of you may have seen some of the social messages we've pushed out over the last few days. Uh, we're moving to a more always-on approach to sharing our knowledge. So what that means is, um, these long form webinars, I'm not going to say we won't be doing them anymore, but they will no longer be held on a weekly basis on Thursdays. So instead, we're opting to release content throughout the week. Uh, we don't want to be shackled by a certain day of the week and a certain format. And we know that often, you know, long form webinars are just not as approachable um, to the modern audience anymore, right? We're trying to create content that's more accessible more quick hit. And then when we need to, we will do deep dives like these. So uh, it's, we're definitely not uh, lessening our commitment to educating. It's just we want to make sure we meet you guys where you are um, in your journey. So um, the other thing it allows us to do is allow for more direct engagement. So we want to be in these LinkedIn groups that we've created. So please go grab the QRs, uh, join the LinkedIn group, subscribe to our newsletter, subscribe to our YouTube because we're gonna be asking a lot of questions of you as well. Like what content do you wanna see? Uh, what issues do you have? What use cases are you interested in learning about? Uh, because often it's just us coming up with the ideas. So we really wanna create a, a better two-way street and make sure that you guys can stay abreast of all the knowledge we're sending out. So please um, check out these links. And then if you go to the next slide, I'll give you a preview of how we're finishing out the program. So coming up next week, we have response spectrum analysis of beam structures. Of course, this is uh, simulation related content featuring the ANSYS product stack with Graham, our distinguished engineer. And then on December 19th, we will host our final live KVA for the time being. And that's gonna be can shared drives handle PDM. So we know a lot of engineering teams still rely on traditional shared drives or maybe cloud shared um, environments to deal with their documents. So we're talking about how one might be able to adopt that. And of course, looking at alternatives like uh, Vault PDM um, for people who want to mature that practice. So um, that's really all I had to share today. I hope everybody's excited about the new way we'll be de delivering content. Uh, we'll be featuring, of course, topics just like these. We'll be doing it differently. So uh, we welcome your feedback uh, throughout the session. Please drop any questions you have in the Q&A panel for Quentin. Uh, he's here live and ready to answer those questions. Um, otherwise, I will get out of the way and let Quentin do what he does best here. Um, I know he's got a full training calendar for this month, so we've got some free training for you guys today. And uh, we're going to start with a couple poll questions um, before we jump in. So first, do you know what Autodesk ACC is? So Nicole, do you mind firing off that first poll? We'll allow our users to engage with it. Yes. Awesome, thank you so much. So we just wanna know like, really what is your familiarity with Autodesk ACC? You know, are you employed with it right now? Of course is the second question. So we'll get the first one put up here and then share the results. Give us just a moment. Nicole, 
Nicole, you good to fire that off? Yes, almost done. Sorry, I might not have prepared you sufficiently. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. We're learning as we go. It's okay. <clears throat> so just a call out to Nicole. She is new to the team and she's doing an amazing job. Um, this is my deficit for not training her properly as the leader of the department. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, we put the poll questions in, but didn't necessarily uh, share with how to fire those off. So if it helps, we can move on and come back to the poll questions when you're ready, Nicole, whatever you prefer. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, we can save it to the end if we need to. That's fine with me. All right. We'll let you take it from here, Quentin, and then if uh, we get this figured out, we'll go and bust in at an appropriate time and ask those questions. Okay, sounds good. Thanks, DJ. All right. Thanks, everybody. All right. Um, so, so what, as DJ was saying, so my name's if none of y'all have been had the chance to to work with me on anything here at Kativ. Um, so I'm Quentin Contreras. Um, I'm a Kativ senior application engineer. So basically, what I'm responsible for is doing support with any um, support cases that those of you that do subscribe or do have a support package with us. Um, I also facilitate training for Kativ. So I'm mainly focused on the Autodesk products, specifically Plant 3D, AutoCAD, Core AutoCAD. Um, I do a little bit of electrical, I'm starting to do some more of that. Um, so basically those are the focus items. But yeah, so a little bit there. And then Sometimes we get, you know, facilitation for customers that might have special requests, uh, special projects that might they might need help with. We kind of try to help with that sometimes too. A um, little bit about my background. So, been doing this a while. Kind of shows my age. Um, so, twenty plus years of drafting and design experience, mainly in the oil and gas industry. Um, I'm based out of our Portland, Oregon uh, location. That's where I work. I work from home, but. Um, I'm originally from Texas, so I lived, I've lived i lived here in the Oregon, Portland, Oregon area for about 12 years now, but all my time prior to that was in Texas, so I kind of, my background's in the oil and gas industry, so that's where my knowledge comes from there, and just to throw something else in there, so I also taught CAD at one point uh, for a couple of years um, to high school kids, so that's kind of, you know, my 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 thing I like to do sometimes is training uh, and also educating people about software. So this kind of fits into my wheelhouse here. But anyways, um, so what are we going to cover today? So basically, what I wanted to go over today was just um, AutoCAD Plant 3D and specifically Autodesk Construction Cloud. Um, so what are we going to cover? Well, basically, what is needed for AutoCAD Plant 3D to enable you to use it as a collaboration project? for your projects and plant, um, how to create the project uh, with collaboration, and then working with the project once you get it shared uh, to ACC. And then what are the benefits? I mean, how is this going to benefit you if, you know, if you're looking at doing that and uh, to use this as a workflow with facilitating ACC to, um, to use with Plant 3D? So those are the things there that we're going to cover. Um, and this is just going to kind of be the surface level of it all. I mean, there's a lot more in the details on what you can do with it once you get established with the workflow. But I just wanted to get you exposed to this. That way you can see where the potential is that you might be able to facilitate this with your workflows. All right. So what is needed for AutoCAD Plan 3D collaboration project? And specifically, and you know, it allows project teams to collaborate collectively. So maybe in a traditional environment, you're just working off of plant 3D projects locally with internally within your company. Um, and to be able to compete with maybe other companies that are working on you know similar projects you might be bidding for, um, the collaboration is going to allow you to expand that even further. So you can take your projects into cloud. You can access you know projects via you know, an iPad or a, or a phone device as well, you know, with the collaboration process. So instantaneously, you can, you know, be in a be in a facility somewhere that you need to mark up something and that information gets relayed back to your design teams. That way your designers can work with those. But 
what do you need actually to be able to do all that? Yes, you need Plant 3D and a couple of other things. So let's look at those as well. So basically what you're going to need is, like I said, you're going to need AutoCAD Plant 3D. In addition to that, you'll need a subscription to the Collaborate Pro, and that'll be for each user. Um, the Collaborate Pro is going to give you access to collaboration for AutoCAD for Plant 3D, and that's what's going to be driving um, the process on when you create a project in ACC, which, what is ACC? We'll get into that here in a little bit, but that's going to be the driving factor in order for you to have these collaborations to be able to share them to the cloud with the with the ACC services that are available. Um, for, for these type of collaboration projects, um, originally I believe that um, Plant 3D started, started with this process back in the 20, 2018 release of Plant 3D. It kind of went through some different iterations. You might've heard of BIM Teams, um, some other BIM acronyms that were thrown out there by Autodesk, and that's kind of evolved over the years. Uh, currently, uh, with like if you're releasing one of the more current releases of AutoCAD, uh, you're going to be dealing with the ACC uh, portion of that. Um, Teams is not available anymore. That one's been um, been um, not used anymore by Autodesk. That's not provided anymore, as far as I believe. So these are the th three things that you would need. Um, obviously, you probably already have Plant 3D, but if you're wanting to establish these other things, you would have to have access to this, which you might already, depending if you already are using any of the other services that are related to ACC. All right, so what is BIM Collaborate Pro? Um, BIM Collaborate Pro is a cloud-based design process that's going to allow you to organize your project data, um, being able to connect, you know, more than just internally, but externally as well. Um, as I was mentioning earlier, it's going to improve the visibility to deliver on time because you're working with with files that you can share over the cloud. So you're not just isolated, you're not siloed to just your office, and you can share those things with others externally as well. So you can like work better collaboratively with these type of plant uh, projects that you'll be working on. And it works you to work, you know, on more complex projects as well, because you have that greater flexibility to to share these files with others um, as you're going through the process, the design process and getting these um, facilitated. All right, so creating a project in, in Autodesk ACC. So what is Autodesk ACC? Autodesk is the acronym that's used. So we're talking about Autodesk Construction mm -hmm. Cloud. So with Autodesk Construction Cloud, um, you're going to create projects within the cloud, and then you're going to create, then you're going to base, when you create those projects, then you will push those plant projects into the project you're creating. So how do you do that? So over here on the slide, and I'll, I'll do a little live demo after this real quick. That way you can kind of see the functionality of this. That way it gives you a little more insight on what exactly is happening. So on the web page here, you would go, you would have access to acc.autodesk.com. Here, as you can tell within the screen capture I have here, whenever you access there, you have the ability to create projects. So your projects are going to be created in there. So, I mean, whether it's, you know, one facility you're working on, then if you need another one, you can create another project and then push your plant projects, you know, to those specific locations. Um, so the first thing you're going to do is create the project, and you'll go through that process first. Um, in the slide there, you can see below that, there's one called ACC, Kativ ACC Overview Training, and there's one Docs. So those are projects that were created on the cloud first. You have to do that initially before you can actually push a Plant 3D project there in that direction. So what happens when you select create project? So you're going to get this window that comes up that's going to allow you to input the information for the project that you're creating on ACC. So you want to give it a project name uh, and some other items as well. There are some required fields that you'll have to fill in. Uh, that would be like the property name, uh, the account that's associated to however you're set up in ACC, and then the project type. So you got some different options there that it's going to provide for you. As you can see in those some of those drop-down menus, if you select that certain field, it's going to let you do that. 
There's also some additional fields that you can fill in there just for more information that you that you could will allow you to track what these projects are associated to. So that's kind of helpful as well. Um, the fields that are asterisks in red, those are required fields. The other fields aren't that don't have that. Those can be filled in later at a different time, even if you go ahead and create the project at this point and don't fill in those fields. You can come back and do those later if need be. So once you get <clears throat> go through that process, fill in the fields and then create it, then it's going to jump you over to the actual project that's created on ACC. So once you create it here initially, um, you're going to be set up to be able to add members to this project. So who's going to be doing the, the work on the, the plant project or, you know, maybe accessing other files that you're going to store in the cloud as well associated to this project. So depending on permissions on the ACC side, you're going to set up different people. And, and that's a little bit more detailed than and if you're interested in that, you know, that'd be something else you can look at down the road with getting more involved on the ACC side. But basically for plant, you're going to have a project admin and then you're going to have an account admin. So the project admin is responsible for adding the members to the plant 3D collaboration project. Um, the account admin is going to be more on the top side uh, and able to do pretty... Is, the account admin is going to be able to do pretty much the same thing as a project admin. Um, the account admin has a little bit more uh, permissions to do a couple of other things on the ACC side, but having these two roles is what you're going to be pushing, you know, adding new members to the project. So in the screen caption over here, you know, of course, I created the project. I'm the account admin, so that's why I'm listed there. So at this point, if I wanted to add members, I would select, you know, the add members blue um, button that's there, and that'll allow me to do that. So once I do that, <clears throat> I'm gonna. It's gonna jump you to another screen to add the additional members that you would be adding to the project, um, and you can add them into a little area that it gives you there. So if you want it to, uh, and if you have multiple users, probably the best way that you would be able to do that uh, efficiently is maybe just gather all those email addresses first. Uh, push them over to like a, a notepad uh, editor or something like that. And then once you have them all, um, once you have them all uh, collected, then you can cut and paste into here and be able to add those all at once. So you don't have to add them individually. You can go through the process and do it that way. Um, that being said, um, once you're able to add them, you would still probably have to go through and for each individual, give them different access levels to what you're, they're going to be doing. Set up their roles, the access level, and then also projects, uh, products that they might have access to. You can set access to, so if you have current subscriptions for certain items, it's going to it's gonna um, be able to see those products, and then you would be able to add those products to the users depending what their role is on working in the Plant 3D project or any other, you know, asset of what uh, is going to entail in, in the project uh, workflow uh, what for whatever you're you're um, working on. So once these roles are added, then those members are going to have access to the cloud services at this point. So this is initially basically, you know, the first initial step on getting the project created, getting the members added, giving them permissions in order to do all this portion of it on the ACC side. So this is the web-based side. Um, we're still not dealing with the plant side yet. We're going to get to that here in a little bit. So <clears throat> we've added, we've created the project in ACC. You've added the members, you've given them permissions. And then at this point, then we're going to dive over into plant 3D. So <clears throat> what you're going to ba basically be uh, going to be working on is how do you get a plant project to the cloud? Because traditionally, your plant project is either going to be located on a server somewhere. If you're a larger company, that's probably what you're doing. You're probably using an instance of SQL Server um, to host that project, and then users have access to the project there. Um, you might be using Vault. Uh, that might be a, a, another workflow you're using as well, which might work fine for you. I mean, if you're working with Vault, but if you wanted to expand on that and 
maybe do a cloud-based service as well, you know, you could do it through there. So how do you how do you get your current projects to the ACC side? So if you've if you're familiar with plant and the ribbon that's on the top, um, you have some tabs there. And if you've ever gone and looked further down, there is a tab called Collaborate. So Collaborate is going to allow you the ability to, to, share the pro to share a project to the cloud. So if you have those, those three items that I was talking about earlier, the Collaborate for Pro for Plant 3D and access to the BIM, uh, the ACC side, if you have those descriptions, then you're able to do that. So what you would need to do um, is first, if you get in there, what you'll notice is like when you first open your project. So I have a project here that you can see in the screen capture here. Um, I have this KVA Plant 3D collaboration uh, project name here. So this project as it stands right now is just located on a server somewhere uh, or a SQL instance, and it's just hosted there. Um, so in order to get that to push to the ACC side, I need to make sure that, that that project is opened. And then I can go up to my collaborate and I want to pick the one that called, that's called share project. Now, currently, as you can see, if you were to do this initially, like I have it here, all of these would be grayed out um, because I don't have a drawing open. So I would need to open a drawing in order for this ribbon to become active. Um, I could open one of the existing drawings that's in the project. However, if you do have an existing drawing open, it's not going to allow you to share the project because that drawing is open in the project. So what do you need to do? So you just need to open a blank drawing. And you can do that different ways. You can create, you know, you can go to new, create a new drawing or what I normally do is just click the, the little plus that's next to the start tab up here just to open a new drawing. So once I do that, <clears throat> once I activate a new drawing that's open in my drawing screen over here without any of the other project uh, files open, then I can go ahead and share the project. So by doing that, by sharing the project, it's going to go through a process of pushing it up to the cloud. So what happens there? So once I go to share a project, it's going to bring up this first window that says share your project with the cloud. So <clears throat> it kind of goes through the steps that it's going to go through as it's going through that, that portion of pushing it up to the cloud. So we're going to pick, you know, the doc, the, the project that we created initially that I was showing earlier, where we want that to be placed. Um, it's going to go through and push and upload everything to there. And then you can go through and add the mem team members there if you didn't already add them uh, on the ACC side. So bas that's basically what it's going to go through um, as it's going through that. So once you get through and select all those items, it's going to start going through and it's going to say uploading projects to the cloud. So it's going to go through this process and you can kind of see, not normally here, but it does have an indication progress bar that shows you the process as it's going through and pushing through all those files. And as it's going through, it should give you some indication of, uh, I believe it shows the files that are being uploaded as it's going through each of them. So you can kind of see the process. Depending on the size of the project, the, link, the time that it takes to push it up can vary. Um, so you just have to be aware of that as well. Um, one of the things that that I recommend if you're you know, wanting to do this down the road is just initially go through your project first, clean it up, get rid of anything that you know it's not necessary in there. If you have additional specs that aren't even being used, you know, get rid of those because it's going to look for everything in the project and push that up to the cloud. So get rid of backup files or anything else that's just not necessary before pushing it up to the cloud. That way it makes this process a little bit faster as you're going through it. All right. So if everything looks good, then you should get this message next that's saying great news, your project is now cloud powered. So at this point, you can just go ahead and close it or you can invite your team members if you wanna look at doing something like that to be added to the project that you just pushed up to the cloud. Um, so once you get that process done, if you jump back over to the web-based, you should see that all of those um, files were pushed over 
to the ACC side, uh, like I'm showing here. So over here, I have that project that I was just looking at that I showed you in plant, and it's pushed over on the ACC side. So you have this pushed up to there, uh, to the cloud now that other users can just go into plant um, and open the project from the ACC side instead of going locally to a server now or locally on their computer if they have it that way set up too. All right, so how does this differ from a project that you would see uh, within a normal plant 3D you know, project that's not hosted on ACC? So there are some differences here and there are some other items here. Those of you that might be familiar with the Vault workflow, this is kind of this is basically the same um, to a degree on how you're how you're working with files. So you're you're checking out and checking in drawings as you're working on them. So what this does is it when you're checking out a drawing, it's pulling that drawing down locally to a cached version of the project on your computer. So as you're checking it out, making modifications, once you're done, then you have to check it back in. So by checking it back in, you're pushing that modified drawing file back up to the cloud, to the ACC side. That way it can, um, that way it can update those database files that are also located with the project um, on the ACC side. So basically thinking about this, you, you kind of have two versions. You have a working, a working cast version on your computer that it's going to pull down. So the first time a new user would get access to this project, it's going to pull that down to a local cast version on their hard drive. And then as they're checking out and checking in items, those drawings are going to be pulled down to that cast version. They'll work on them. Then when they check them back in, they'll get pushed back there. Um, but the real project lays on the ACC side. So you're always going through that process. So it's a different type of workflow that you have to get familiar with uh, and comfortable with on going through that process because it's not traditionally like, you know, um, like a pr plant project where you're just opening and closing drawings. Essentially, you kind of are, but you're checking in, checking out as you're opening and closing drawings as well. Um, Let's see here. So basically, yeah, as I was saying, so if I wanted to work on one of these drawings here, you'll notice these little circles here uh, that are next to the left of what the file um, might be, the file name here. So for instance, these are the PNID drawings. There's a couple of them in here. And I want to work on this one here. So basically, I can either right click on the drawing. It's going to bring up my pop-up uh, menu here, and this will allow me to check it out. Um, I can't check it in, that's ghosted out because that hasn't been accessed on the computer yet uh, for this individual user. So right now, this, this is just a gray circle. Now, if I proceed to check it out, once that happens, then you'll see a green check mark here. And that green check mark indicates that I have it checked out locally on my computer, that I'm the one working on it right now. If another user on another computer was trying to access this file, they'll see that this is doesn't have the green check mark, but it will be locked because another user is accessing that file at a certain time, and then the, um, that prevents the other user from making any modifications as they're working on it. Um, and then simply, you know, when you're done modifying it, then you would go through the process of checking it back in. So there is a two-step, you know, kind of process you go through here, and it gets a little bit familiar as you're going through that. So once you get to the point where you check it in, it is going to give you a couple of options here um, to keep working. Uh, if you want to keep the file open even after checking it in, um, just to be able to, to have it there, access. Um, it allow you to clean up cache files. Um, so there is some caching that goes on as you're working on a collaboration project just, just to because of those database files as well on the caching information that's going back and forth as you're working on a project. Um, the other thing you can do is you can add comments to this version as you're going through. So versions, what is a version? So unlike um, like a SQL project or a Plant 3D project that's located locally on your server, as you're going through and making modifications to a drawing, anything you you had previously before making that that newest modification 
that's gone. Um, you can't get back to that. But on the ACC side, one of the cool things here too is that it creates a version number for each instance after you check it out, check it back in, it goes to a new version number. So let's say down the road, there was something you did in a previous version that you need to revert back to with this particular drawing. So on the ACC, on the web based side, you can go back and find that file and it'll have the version numbers listed there. And you can pull a version number that you might want to either get information from, uh, maybe something that was added that was removed at one time and bring back into the current drawing, you could do that. Or if you totally need it just to bring that one back to replace the, the current one, uh, you could do that too. So it does give you that flexibility of going back and looking at those different version numbers, um, version version uh, num versions of the drawing that were saved previously. That's where I was trying to go there, um, if you ever needed to do that. So that's pretty handy. Um, I, I've worked with plant users in the past that have had to do things like that. And, and that's you know kind of been a, a thing they've always wanted. And this is something you could do here. The other thing that you might want to, that could happen too, is that let's say you're working in a drawing and for some reason you have your computer crash or something just, something wonky happens. It, it happens. I mean, if you've used plant or any other product, software product, it things happen um, and corruption can occur as well. So if you're working on a current drawing and you go back into it and there's just a uh, not going right with it, then you would, might want to get rid of that and just go back to the previous version and start from there because that one wouldn't have had the the um, the problems that you're running into now with whatever happened to that current file that you might be working on. So you do have that option there. So that's a that's a good thing to have. Um, so I wanted to jump back here and show you one more thing. <clears throat> so if you notice here. When we're checking out, checking in, yeah, I talked about, you know, these little indicators here that tell you if a drawing's checked in or not. The other thing I wanted to point out is that when we initially, when I showed you initially that we opened the project before pushing it up to the cloud, it didn't have this little icon next to it. So what is this icon? So this icon here shows me that it's an ACC project. So if you ever, you know, initially when you're first starting this workflow with incorporating this, you might, you know, which one's which one's the one that I that I pushed up, which is the one that's on the ACC now. Um, this is how you can tell. This is going to give the indication that, you know, it's it's a cloud-based project that you're working on now. Uh, if you had the other one opened, then you wouldn't get you wouldn't get the icon. In addition, you wouldn't see these little markers here that indicate. Um, <clears throat> whether a drawing's checked in or checked out, you wouldn't see those there as well. So I did want to point that out too. And I'll show that here in a little bit because I do want to kind of go through the demo of this real quick too. Uh, so go back over here. Um, so let's look at these considerations first as you're going through the project. Um, just some things to consider, just good um, do's and don'ts. <laughs> so just remember that you are working with something that's cloud-based now, not locally on your computer. So you kind of can't do the same things that you might have done on a on a regular project that was located on your computer. So you don't want to manually upload files to ACC to overwrite any drawings or files that are already in the project on the ACC side. So you don't want to go through that process because remember... The key thing with plant is it's database driven. So if you're removing files in that method, you are potentially going to cause corruption with the project. And that even happens with a normal project. You know, you kind of don't want to do that. You kind of, you have to go through the plant 3D project manager on doing that type of adding drawing or removing drawing and replacing it with something else. You still have to go through that process. Uh, don't go through the ACC side and, and do anything to the project files there. Also, you don't want to manually delete them on the ACC side. You still want to go through the plant project manager and do it through that process there because that's going to sync back up to the cloud-based version on doing the updates there. So just kind of the, some rules of thumb to consider as you're going through that. So I did want to include those there. 
All right, so I'm going to jump back uh, out of this real quick. And I did want to share uh, something different here. So let me get back over here and kind of navigate you through some of the things that we've already been through. So let's see if I can get this done here. All right, <clears throat> so you should be looking at, um, so this is the Autodesk Construction Cloud actual um, web page, the web page. Um, potentially you're gonna be using like Google Chrome to access this or, or Microsoft Edge you can use as well. Um, I've always used Chrome, I don't know, it's, you know what I've had more success with, but that's that's where I come from. I'm using this. So basically, when you're accessing the cloud, uh, this is the website here, this accautodesk.com, and that's going to take you to uh, the ACC that you have. And like I said, that's depending on you know your subscription. If you have those uh, those subscriptions, then you'll be able to do this. So basically, what this looks like is uh, I'm an account admin, so that's how I'm coming up here. Um, and I can click on these settings and then I can come in here and add members or add projects. Um, that's kind of what I was talking about earlier when I was adding a project, how I would do that. Um, so if I wanted to create a new project, I can come over here. This is what I was showing you earlier. And this is where I would come in and fill in all the information that would be related to the project that I'm going to be working on where I'm going to put push my plant project. Now, this isn't just just for plant, you can also put different, you know, files in here too. So if you have a workflow that you're dealing with like Revit or Inventor or or Navisworks or something like that, you're going to push those up there, but you're probably going to have a different file structure on where those are uh, too. And additionally, there are some additional cloud services um, that you would probably need too, depending on what the other applications might be that you're incorporating into the workflow with the project that that you'd be facilitating. Um, so what happened to the project that I pushed up? Um, so I pushed that project up to my docs folder here and we can look at this. So I wanted to show you this. So these are, these are the people that, that are added to this particular project. Um, and I showed you, you know, that as well. I can come in here once they're added and give them permission to certain other aspects of the BIM platform that I have access to. So these people have access to docs, to design collaboration, model coordination, and there's some other ones here as well uh, that are listed that, you know, that I could give them access to. Um, these show that they're active um, and that they're working on the projects when they were added, and there's some other information. And I can come in and change some of these roles as well. I was talking about, you know, stuff here that you can come in and, and play with those, uh, depending on how they're gonna be working on a project. Um, so let's go back in here. I want to go back into my docs. And actually, I want to go here. All right. So this is the project that I pushed up to docs. And this is the one we were just looking at when I was going through the presentation. So as you can see, all of how you would normally look at a plant 3D project, all of that is pushed over here into my into my ACC docs now, into this folder that, that's been created for the project. So you should be familiar with those. Um, those of you that have used Plant, you know the folders that are associated to the project, and then all the individual files that are located in, under that root structure of the project name folder there as well. So everything's here, um, located here in, in this location here. So this is where I would go in and, you know, put put the files, you know, if I wanted to add a folder to this to add some more additional information that wasn't, you know, kind of related to the project, but not, then I can create additional folders here to facilitate some of those needs as well. So this is the ACC side. There, um, <clears throat> there's a little bit more here on permissions as you're going through this. And um, I'll include some links here at the end that, you know, if you have any of those questions, you can go through there and look for those particular items. Uh, there'll be some information there as well. But this is kind of, like I said, the initial surface, just to get you familiar with the workflow here, the basic workflow. I'm getting just pretty set up pretty pretty simply. Um, and it is pretty a pretty simple process if you're just, you know, pushing, creating the project on the ACC side and pushing it up to the cloud. Uh, this is where you would do it here. 
but there are some different settings in here for different permissions and, and so forth as you can go through and once you're uh, pushing the project up to the cloud here. Um, so let me jump over to, to the plant side real quick. Um, let me come over, stop sharing first. And I'm going to jump over to Plant 3D, actually. Let's see. And share that real quick. All right. So you should be seeing my plant right now. <clears throat> okay. So I wanted to kind of go through the process that I was talking through earlier with the slides. That way you can see this um, live. So right now I have a default project. So let's say I did have an existing project that I wanted to push up to ACC, uh, to the cloud. So this is the one we were looking at uh, previously on the slides. So we, like I was saying, the icon that's different. So this shows me the ACC icon that lets me know this is a collaboration project. So if I wanted to open this one, it's going to go through the cloud and pull that down. So as it's accessing it, it's also looking to sync up, let's say somebody else was working on the project, making modifications, it's going to detect those and pull those updated files down to my cache version that's on my local computer right now. So that's how it's keeping track of any modifications that another user might be doing. Um, <clears throat> but if I had another project that I'd wanted to push up, uh, so let's say this one here, I have this other one located in here. Uh, so let me open this project. So the project's open. I don't think I have anything really in this one, maybe some folders, but I don't think I've put any drawings in here. And then some specs in here. And I did remove some of the specs. So as you know, it's for plant users, you know, whenever you create a brand new project, it's going to pull down, uh, if you haven't made any modifications, a plethora of specs in here uh, that you might necessarily be, be needing to use. So I did remove some of them. Uh, like I said, you want to remove items from the project that aren't necessarily going to, are used anymore or are going to be needed. That way, when you push this up to collaboration, it's not going to take as long. All right. So that being said, so I have this project here. Um, and then, like I was noting earlier, I'm over here on my collaboration tab, and I can't select anything here to push it up to, uh, to ACC right now. Um, so I have to open a new drawing. So I'm just going to click the plus here. And as you can see, once I do that, then this ribbon here for the collaborate becomes active now. So now I could actually pre uh, push up the project uh, to the ACC side. So over here, uh, like I said, I have this project open that I want to push up. So with this one open, now I can go share project. So once I click share project, it should give me that window that I was talking about, share your project with the cloud. Uh, I can, it just, it's just kind of giving you what's going to be happening as you're going through this project. And, you know, I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to choose where I want this to go on the ACC side. It's going to start doing it and then it's going to finish. And then I can start inviting those team members that need to have access to the project. So get started. Um, it's going to look through on the BIM side and see what, what hub I want to push it to. And you might have different hubs here. Uh, for this one, I just have this Kativ support. And then here, if I wanted to push it to a different folder, I could do it in here. I'm going to do this one in Docs as well. That way we can see uh, this other one, this other project added to where we were looking at the previous one on, on the Chrome side, on the web-based side here. So I'm going to go ahead and upload project. And as it's doing that, it's going through here. So this, it did kind of give me an estimate. It said 15 minutes on how long it was going to take. Like I said, it's going to vary depending on, you know, how many, how many files you have in the project, what the complexity is, what the size of them are. Uh, that's just going to be dependent on that. This one shouldn't take relatively too long. Um, I know since we're doing like a, like a Zoom thing right now. I know it does pull some of my system resources, so this might take a little bit longer, but when I was doing this one kind of similar to the other project a while ago um, that you were looking at, it didn't take, took a couple of minutes at that uh, to go through there. And you can see as it's going through here, it's showing me some of the actual files that it's going through and pushing up and syncing up to the cloud. 
and pushing it on that side at the ACC side. So I'm like at 80, 90 of 97 right now, 93 of 97. It'll hit some of these larger files and take a little bit longer, as you can see. Um, but it does kind of give you some indication on when it's going through and how it's progressing on how much longer it's going to take. It looks like it's almost done. It's probably wrapping up, pushing everything there right now. So hopefully here in a little bit, I'll get the other window that indicates that um, that it's it's done. So we'll give it a little sec here. We still got some time. So um, it's going through and pushing through the database files now. Those might take a little bit longer, but in this case, I didn't. I don't think my drawings, I don't have any drawings in here, so it shouldn't take too long to push those up. Um, and there it goes. As you can see, it starts populating over here now. The the project that I originally opened that was locally on the computer is now over here. Uh, that's been substituted out for the ACC icon now. So now I know this project is one that I'm working off of the ACC side. So I could go to invite team. I'm just going to close this. Uh, that way we can see it here. So it should have, I didn't like, I was showing you earlier, I didn't have any drawings in the other one. I did have these folders. It pushes through everything there and then all my specs in here. And you can see how, you know, I'm getting those indicators when I need to check in, check out something as well. And at this point, you're just going through the same process of adding drawings or moving drawings as you normally would with a normal plant project. And you want to do it at this level. Like I said, I don't want to go add drawings on the web-based version. I need to do it through this level. So if I wanted to add a drawing, I still am going to go through this process and do it here. And I'll show you something here in a little bit too. Let me bounce back over now to, I'm going to stop share. And let's see, stop share. There we go. And I want to share uh, web-based again. So let's go here. So as you can see, originally I just had this A version of the project. Now I have the B version of the project. So now I have two projects that I pushed up to the ACC side. Um, let's look over here in my PNAD drawings for this new one that I just pushed over. So over here, I have my PNAD drawings and I have no drawings in this folder yet. So I'm going to bounce back over now to plant and show you how simple it is to get a new drawing in here. So let's do that. So I'm going to go with PNID drawings. I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to add a new drawing, drag my window over here, and I'm just going to give it a random name, call it that. So let's select defaults. I'm not going to add anything to this. I just wanted to get the drawing added in here. Uh, when I first create a drawing, I'm going to get this plus. So it is checked out. It's this locally on my computer. I haven't made any, you know, it's telling me it's a new drawing and it needs to be checked in. So it's not on, on the ACC side yet. It's locally on my computer. So once I've done, you know, any modifications or anything to this one, um, then I can go ahead and I need to check it in. So I'm going to go ahead and check it in. It's going to bring up that dialogue that I was talking about earlier. Uh, and then I can just go ahead and OK that. So it is going to go through a process. Let me drag this over here. Um, it's telling me that the file is being checked in. So there is a little bit of, a little bit of, you know, it going back and doing that process. And it should finish up here in a little bit. It really shouldn't take this long. But I think, I, like I said, you know, I'm doing, doing the screen share right now. So it does take a little bit more. So as I complete that, the plus went away, and now it's just a gray circle showing that it's available for a checkout if I wanted to do it at this point. So I'm going to jump back over again to my web. And as you can see, that drawing has been added now. So I didn't have a drawing in here before, but now I have it. The other thing I wanted to show you was I was talking about earlier are these version numbers. So I haven't done anything to this one. This is you know, the first iteration of this. So this is version one. So how does that change? So let me jump over back to plant and share that. Apologize for the back and forth, but kind of helps to show the process here a little bit better. So I'm going to go back into here. I'm going to 
right click on it and check it out. I could have done it up here at the menu uh, under ribbon up here too, same process. It, it's just more personal preference how you want to do that. So I checked it out, but I haven't opened it yet. So I'll double click on it and that'll open the file. So let's say I'm, I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit, put it over here just so I can save it. Uh, so I'm gonna do a save. Now it's saved. I can see that when I save it, this does change as well because I did make a modification and in indicating that I need to check it in now. So it goes through that process and then I can check it in again. I'm gonna go okay and wait for that to go gray. And let's jump back over and go back over here. So now you can see that this iteration changed to version two. So now I have different iterations of this. I can actually go and preview this as well here on the ACC side. So if I click on here, it'll bring up the preview of the drawing that I just created. Um, if I would have added any real content to here, I could have gone back to the other version and showed you, you know, the differences there as well. But it just zooms in on the drawing portion of this when I'm viewing it this way. But it does let me know that this is not the current version. But whenever I jump over to the version two, that that's the current, then I don't get that indication there. So you can go through these and preview them here on the ACC side as well. So pretty straightforward. Um, and adding these and everything, like I said, once you get this initially project set up here on the ACC side, <clears throat> then you're going to be able to push that project up to, you know, here on here. So let me jump back. So we're wrapping it up here. Um, I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint. And I wanted to show you a couple other things. Share. Go back to. All right. Uh, da, da, da. Go as far as I wanted it to go. Bear with me here. I'll get there. There isn't too much here. Yeah, we went through that. Okay. <clears throat> so, what are your benefits? Um, what are you going to take away from this? Why would you maybe want to think about using collaboration for a project? As I was saying, you know, it kind of breaks the chains of hosting the project on SQL Server um, or locally on your computer. Um, with SQL, you know, you're going to have to pay for, for SQL anyways and the maintenance of your SQL Server. Um, there is some cost effective, you know, there is some cost involved in that. Um, that might be the cost that you would use on the ACC side as well to be able to host it there. Um, so there is a monetary thing to look at there if you're looking at, you know, doing this, you know, moving away from, from SQL Server. Um, Vault is still, you know, a good option as well. I'm not saying don't use Vault, but, you know, <clears throat> there are some, diff there are some, there is some, a little bit more that you can do on the Vault environment opposed to the ACC side. Um, so you just have to take those into consideration what's going to be a best fit for you. Um, but with thinking, if you're, if your software package portfolio is mainly leading on, you know, the Autodesk side, then some of those other applications like Revit, um, Navisworks, Civil, those are starting to be more absorbed on the Autodesk side with using the ACC and working collaboratively that way. So <clears throat> that flexibility there is going to be able to, you know, make you more competitive with other projects you might be bidding on or being able to to work more effectively more cohesively if you have you know people out in the field uh, that are needing to to look at you know drawings that are being revised or need to be revised or or just you know that general workflow that you're used to used to using right now you know this might benefit you better to being more productive on getting those projects done you know quicker and and without maybe incidents that you've had in the past with having to, you know, go back and forth with that process of, of the design process. Um, kind of just to reiterate that I kind of talked about some of this stuff already, working collaboratively, you know, that's going to give you more flexibility because once you give people, those members access to certain, certain levels of what's on the ACC side, then they'll be able to see that data in there. And, um, 
a little bit more security as well on locking down what they can and can't see, what you want them to see. Uh, it might be a third party vendor that you're working with, but they don't need access to exactly everything. Maybe they just need need a view level of the file. They don't need to modify it. They just need to view it. You can set that up there on the ACC side to be able to do you to allow you to do that. Um, so that pretty much <laughs> covers it. I know that's a lot. It's a lot um, to soak in. Um, there's a lot there, and there's a lot more that in detail that I could have gone through to to give you more of those, you know, insight of what it, what exactly you would be doing once you did establish this workflow if that's what you're looking at doing. And you know, we're able to to help you with that down the road if that's something you're looking at. We can we can do that. Um, um, as I was going through initially with with my presentation about my intro about me, I think I failed to to point out I. Before coming to a Kativ, I worked with Autodesk for about uh, almost 12 years. Uh, I was mainly supporting Plant 3D. So any of y'all that are still on the call that might have I might have worked with in the past uh, regarding Plant 3D, uh, I've seen a lot, and I've seen a lot of you know I've gone through this iteration of collaboration for Plant and. Yeah, I, I've seen I've seen it benefit a lot of customers and and how they're you know migrating to to incorporate this into their workflows, but there's going to be some links here. I think Nicole was going to add those to the chat as well. That way, those yep. are available to you. Just added to the chat. Cool. Thank you. Um, so those are there. Um, did we ever get the poll thing figured out? Can we do that? Perfect. So if you want to do that, that should have popped up for you. So if you want to answer those, those would be great. That'll give us and me some background knowledge of, you know, whether you do know what ACC is or, you know. Is that coming through for you, Nicole, um, people? Yes, so far. Um... <clears throat> Four people know what Autodesk ACC is. And then we have, um, are you currently using Autodesk ACC? We have one yes and three no's so far. All right. So <clears throat> kind of wrapping up. Um, so we just these are just the agenda topics that, that we went through. So hopefully you learned what is needed for AutoCAD Plan 3D collaboration project, as I noted earlier. Um, how to go through the basic process of creating the project first on the ACC side. And then once you get that, how to use a workflow that's going to push a project up to collaboration ACC. And then um, what are the benefits of this for you? Um, like I said, it's going to vary. Uh, it's just depending, you know, you are going to have to get those additional subscriptions uh, for the Collaboration Pro um, and the Collaboration for Plant 3D. But it, like I said, it, it, it just might be, you know, what you're looking for and working more cohesively with the teams that are working on these projects for you. Um, so anyways, um, so I want to say thank you for, for attending. Um, if there were any questions, um, I know we got a little bit of time. I'll try to answer what we can if we have any. If not, then you can always, you know, reach out to us. You know, if it comes up that you did find something that you thought about later and want to follow up with us, you know, please feel free to reach out to you. That would be great. I, I'd happy to be answer anything uh, that you would have with this as well. And uh, yeah, thank you for your time today. I really enjoyed um, presenting this to you. This is kind of, plant, plant 3D is kind of my, always been my baby so i've kind of hey, been, been through it all yes hey, Quentin, we did get one question sneaked in here at the end uh bob is asking are the files in the cloud backed up he's also asking is there a difference between is there a diff feature between drawing versions is there so a really diff feature i guess looking for file differences between revisions uh no they're still so the version numbers are still just DWG files, so that they're just a different, a different. It's going to be saved. The file name changes uh, whenever the other version, the previous version, is saved. So that'll be the difference there. But basically, they're still drawing files, um, and they are. I mean, the cloud. Everything you're pushing to the cloud is 
always backed up there. Um, so if something ever does happen, I mean, I've seen, I've never seen a project go completely get, <laughs> or files completely get removed, I don't think, uh, when I was on the Autodesk side working with some of this. Um, there are some, I think there, there might be a way to get some of those files if that ever does happen. I think maybe once or twice. I've had to get, you know, I think development on the plant side can kind of look into that more if something does happen. You do have a really, really cool feature on the plant side, though, to where you can make a backup if you want a backup. So there's an option there, and that's a normally there with a SQL project as well, where you right-click on the project name and do a backup. <clears throat> so if you wanted to do that, if you wanted to pull down a backup of the project on, from the cloud, you would just go create backup. And what that does is that pulls everything back down as a whole project um, and just makes it a SQLite version, again, that you can use. So there is a way of, you know, if you wanted that peace of mind of having a backup of the project, that would be one way of doing it as well, you know, just, just to give you a little bit of peace of mind. All right, thanks. Hopefully that answers your questions, Bob. If Again, if not, just reach us offline and we'll be happy to close the loop with you. All right, Quentin, thanks so much for today. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining. And yeah, we look forward to seeing you next week on the simulation topic. Thanks, everybody. Have a great afternoon.